Hey guys, this is Derek from the Wrestling IQ 101 podcast. I just want to let you know about this great deal that we have with Collar and Elbow. Collar and Elbow is where Urban Streetwear meets wrestling. Act now and use our discount code WIQ101 to receive extra savings at checkout when you visit CollarandElbowBrand.com today. Wrestling IQ 101 and Collar and Elbow. It's a match made in wrestling. Hey guys, this is Andrew. And this is Derek. And this is Wrestling IQ 101. And make sure you check out our good friends at GoPro Wrestling and their first event, Go Big or Go Home. Definitely. Make sure you go to GoProWrestling.com. Use the promo code WIQ101 at checkout to get a discount today. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Look, wrestling 101, class is in session. Pay attention to the teachings, that's from Andrew and Derek. I mean, these guys making the killer with no competition. Dynamic duo better than the Hardy Boys and the Dudley Boys. Everybody make some noise, mess with them, you get destroyed. They cannot be beat, take a seat. Watch them do their thing on the MIC, face to feet. They cannot be seen like JC. Oh my goodness, it's in killing spree. Yeah. Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of Wrestling IQ 101. I'm Andrew alongside Derek. Yep. And you can follow Wrestling IQ 101 on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Wrestling IQ 101. Remember, you can leave a like right here on YouTube and subscribe or on our U- on our iTunes page or the B Plus player. And today we're joined with the public enemy, TJ Marconi. How's it going? Hey, what's going on, fellas? It's been a long time. Yeah, it yeah, has man. been, man. You know, you know TJ, you know... <clears throat> I figured we'd just start off with this, man, because last time you were here, I mean, you were a fan favorite. You were doing everything the right way. Uh, you know, you were the leader of the boot party, and, and things were kind of going your way. I mean, um, how, how, how has things changed for you since the last time we spoke uh, on this podcast? I mean, personally, I haven't changed. It's just... Uh... Mm-hmm perception of the internet and the perception of wrestlers to me has changed so I just embraced what people have been saying about me um, I'm still the same guy but you know, people have a different interpretation of what I've been doing lately so that's, mm-hmm. not, that's not on me yeah definitely and um I mean, I know you were um, you were out for a while uh, you know due to some uh, some health issues. How um how was it like you know just going through that whole process and just getting back track and you know getting back into the ring? Um, it, it's been it's been it's been very rough. Um, honestly, like uh, everyone, my doctors, uh, friends, and family told me I'm probably crazy to keep doing this. But um, mm-hmm. you know, last November I got real sick. They found the condition I had with my heart and my, the blood clot of my lung, and um. You know, it was suggested to me to stop wrestling. And if I were to stop wrestling at that time, you know, I could pretty much sign off that uh, I was a success. I did things that people didn't think I would ever accomplish. I was on TV. I put smiles on people's faces. I made people cheer me, boo me. I won titles. So at that point, I was comfortable with kind of leaving. But um, I'm very stubborn and I'm still here and I got people to prove wrong and I still have things that's the one I'll accomplish so yeah you know that's one of the things I really respect about you because you know I, um, I got sick around the same time you did and and seeing you come back and, and proving people wrong is, is something that uh, that I'm really excited that you're doing um, you know let's just talk about this real quick though um, House of Glory you know you went out there and, and you brought out the boots and uh, you know you left them in the middle of the ring for just a brief moment I mean what was going through your mind knowing that you know this could really you know this could have really been a, a, a career ender that, that, that was a calculated move on my end uh, mm-hmm. House of Glory has always been one of my biggest platforms yeah. and I figured that I was going to if I was going to go out I was going to go out there on my terms yeah. but I wanted to use that time to kind of cement myself as a player there um, House of Glory I've always been one step away from winning a title uh, yeah. tag team title or um, and I've always been one step behind on a tag 
dating channel. I never really was a singles, uh, singles competitor there, so I figured this was going to be my chance to let the roster know and the crowd know that I'm coming. When I come back, I'm going to be a singles competitor. And I'm coming for titles, and I'm, they're going to get the real version of DJ Marconi and not what they've been seeing. So that was a calculated move on my part. Yeah, and let's let's talk about how was how was it just the the process itself, um, just getting back into like ring shape, like. You know, were there times that you were, like, frustrated with everything? And, and like, how did you deal with it? Oh, yeah, man. I'm, I'm still frustrated to this day. I'm, I'm probably at 20% of what I'm my best. Yeah. I'm, but I'm still a, a lot. I'm still better than a ton of people that are out there right now. I'm frustrated to this day because um, I'm still not where I should be or where I was at before I got hurt or where I was at my best. So I'm definitely still frustrated. It's a daily process. I'm trying to get my my ring cardio back. I'm trying to get my breathing back to normal. I'm trying to get my body back right. And, um, you know, in the meantime, uh, 20% of me is still 100% of, uh, better than other people out there. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. how, how do you, like, you know, going through what you've gone through, you know, do you feel like now you can do things better or even wiser than you did before? 100%. 100%. I'm going to be... Uh, wrestling smarter. I'm gonna be um, beating people up quicker to get the matches over quicker. <laughs> oh. um, and I'm going to be more healthy. And uh, hopefully, it's the best version of me. Uh, give me another like six months to a year. We'll see where I'm at. Yeah, yeah we definitely have to give you up. Yeah, updated. Yeah, definitely for sure. And um, <laughs> you know, you know, now having that time just to you know think and reflect on everything, you know. Is your mission different, or did it, you know, sway a little bit from what you originally wanted in wrestling? Um, my end goal still remains the same. I want to be able to um, have a living just performing wrestling, uh, being a wrestler. But um, being out made me look at the business as a whole a different way, and the boys a different way. You know, given the when I broke the internet a year and a half ago doing my job and people are saying that I should burn my boots well I had an opportunity to burn my boots and I didn't burn them and I'm still here so you know I got people that I need to prove wrong sure you know it's funny when you broke the internet I mean you're alluding to that feud with Grimm Um, you know how was it working with Grimm and you know uh, when people and proving those people wrong that you that, that were hating on you I mean, you know, Grim, you know, it, it was a means to an end. Mm-hmm. The angle got over so well that I was able to convince the boys that I was really being a heel. You know, I'm always honest with you two guys, and I was put on the fifth wheel. You guys know me on a personal level. I'm really not my character, but yeah. I was able to portray my character in a way that I convinced not only the fans, but I also convinced pretty much half the wrestling that I was the biggest piece of shit in the world. But, you know, Grim, I got a good exposure on it. I took care of him. I took care of his backyard guys. No one got hurt. Yeah. But I obviously was convincing enough that I killed these kids. Yeah, yeah I mean, it looked like it, for sure. You know? Yeah. And it was awesome because, you know, I mean, people from, from Joey Janela to Bobby Wayward, I mean, people were just going nuts on you. I mean, you literally yeah. made a name for yourself. And, uh and you were able to capitalize on that for, for so many well, and matches. It, it kind of bit me in the ass because then people were thinking that I was really this person in life when it booked me. But, uh-huh. you know, when I see these people, I must have people I never met. Like, I never met Ethan Page. When I meet him, I'm going to slap him in the face. As, yeah. I, as a man, he took money out of my pocket. But I recently actually saw Bobby Wayward at the Escape from New York tournament. And uh, we talked the first time I met him. And I'm like, yo, dude, you, you running your mouth online. You didn't know me personally. You cost me money. So why don't we go outside and talk real quick? We had a, we had a conversation. Oh, we came into an agreement. He finally got to know who I was. Yeah. And now, you know, it's respect. Yeah, but a lot of people don't know who I was. Like, I still have a bucket list of people that I never met yet since this thing happened that I'm going to speak to personally. Some people who have said stuff, I've seen them. And we, uh, we've come to terms with, you know, they shouldn't have said what they said because... At the end of the day, I'm one of the boys, and you're, and I wasn't exposing the business. You were exposing me and costing me money out of my pocket. So, you know, the day's going to come. There's, a, there's about three or four people left that I still got to speak. I got to see in person. Yeah, I mean, you know, to be honest with me, you're, you're a very skilled athlete. And any, anybody who has seen you in the ring, I, 
I'm pretty sure we'll attest to that for sure. I mean, I mean, you've been champions, uh, you've held championships in many places and done many, many incredible things. So, I'm, you know, we're sorry that that happened to you personally on a personal note. No, I mean, you know, it just, you know, the truth comes out. You know, people who know sure. me know me, and uh, you know, I'm, I, with wrestling, it's not only it's not my only source of income. If it was, it would have been a lot of different situation, but. Um, it did cost me a lot of money, a lot of opportunities that I, I didn't get because of uh, the boys running, you know, getting hooked and getting, uh, making, getting, they, they became marks at the end of the day that they thought that I was really being this heel character. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, on one hand, it's like, it, it sucked, but on the other hand, it's like, you really did a good job at making people believe yeah. that that's yeah. who you really yeah. were. Yeah, it was crazy. And, 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 I was, and I was given the opportunity, like, oh, do a video and say it. I'm like, no, nah, I, I, got, I got people believe it again. I'm not, I'm not, get, I'm not gonna, uh, I'm not gonna ruin that. And it's gonna cost me a little bit in the beginning, fine. But at the end, see what happens. And then, you know, I'm still almost at the end. So let's see, I'm starting to get my buzz back again. I'm starting to get people get behind me again. And, uh, you know, everything works out. Everything yeah, works out. Sure. I mean, how can you not root for you? You know, you got the size, you got the power. I mean, you've been champion in other places. I mean, how can you not root for TJ Marconi, for sure? Um, you know, let me ask you about this, man, because, you know, the last time I saw you, man, was at SWF at, at Mega Slam, and, and you got right in the face of, of, of that championship match. Uh, do you have any, you want to go back there and, and win that championship again, or, or you have bigger, better sights? Uh, I, I mean, I never lost it. Mm -hmm. um, I held the title for almost 600 days. I defended it about, sure. I think it was almost 30, 30 title defenses. Mm -hmm. I legitimized the title by defending it in the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico. Um, I mean, I, I've done a lot for SWF. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't been beaten for the title. Sure, I'll give, uh, it's not like on my my number one to-do list. You know, I've kind of pretty much conquered SWF, but you know, Whoever the champion is, when I decide I want to take it back, I mean, sure, I'll go back and get my title. Yeah, definitely. Now, with, you know, everything that was going on as well, it seems like, you know, you, you kind of birthed the phrase, you know, now you got a story to tell. And I think that's yeah. just, that that's perfect for you because, you know, even sometimes when I'm, I'm looking at you on the internet and I'm like, dang, I know TJ, but I'm like, damn, is this true? Like, did he really do this? Or does he really feel like this? But it's like, like, how did you just come up with that whole idea? And, um, you know, just explain that whole process. Um, so I'm a, I guess, uh, again, for people uh, listening, I break down the fourth wall. You know, I'm a very, I'm a movie guy. I'm like a comic book nerd. And um, there's a movie that came out in the mid-2000s called Beowulf. Mm -hmm. And um, Beowulf, if you guys know the, the poem of Beowulf, he basically sells his soul to become like an immortal. Um, the king. It's a long story short, but in the movie Beowulf, um, there's a, a man trying to take his throne, trying yeah. to kill him, and he can't be killed. So he drives the guy back to the edge of the ocean, starts taking off all his armor, and he basically tells the guy, "You can't be the one to kill me because I can't die." So then his um, his like subjects go, "What do you want to do with him, King?" He goes, "No, nah, leave him alone. Give him a cold, gold piece of him. Go back to town." Now he has a story to tell. Yeah. So I, I heard that line. I said, I can use this for wrestling. I can use this at the end of my promos. I can use it for internet post. At the end of every post, at the end of every promo, people are going to have their own interpretation and their own story about it. So I thought it was the perfect line for it. So I kind of stole it from the movie Beowulf, where now you have a story to tell. That's yeah, where I got it from. Yeah, it's it, it's. I definitely uh, remember that movie, watching it, and I remember that line as well. And I, I like kind of like the the way you the context you kind of use it. It's kind of like. It feels like it's just it's like mob vibes when it comes to you. It's like, yeah. you know, now you got a story to tell. That that's what I get from the, you know, your the, your character. Exactly. Like everyone's gonna read. Everyone's gonna read into. Everyone's gonna read a post or watch a promo, watch a video, and they're all gonna have their own interpretation on it. Like it literally comes back to when I broke into that that video when I turned heel and beat up those kids. There was actually one thing that happened, but everyone had their own story to tell. So I kind of brought it back to that. Like I said, all right, you know what? It's going to be my tagline. It's going to be my new character. I'm using my, my Italian upbringing. I was born and raised in, in Brooklyn, New York. My father's full-blooded Sicilian. My mother's Sicilian and Portuguese. So I kind of like grew up around that like Sopranos-esque atmosphere. So I said, let me take a little bit of the Sopranos, a little bit of myself, and make that what my new character is. And then the Public Enemy moniker was just, I'm a huge fan of 
of all those gangster movies and like and the, uh, everyone said that he's probably going to be number one like when Al Capone was probably going to be number one or John Dillinger was probably going to be number one so I said alright let me run with that yeah you know it's great because you talked about the mob like feeling I mean it, I've even been afraid to come up to you and ask you for interviews because uh, like backstage because I'm like you never know what you're going to get especially when you're running around with uh, COD and, and, and sending those cryptic messages to everybody and putting that stuff out there I mean what beautiful vignettes you were putting out there for sure yeah I mean I, I'm, it's good that I'm getting people to believe again but you, you, yeah, I know you're sending a little bit nervous but you actually know like you know it, it's all so it's all part of the show man <laughs> Yeah, definitely. And you, um, you were talking about how you, uh, you know, got the phrase from, you know, a movie. Um, what are some of your favorite movies? I know you're big into like Marvel and stuff like that. Yeah, man. Um, I'm a um, huge, uh, huge nerd. I read comic books all my life, and so when they started making comic book movies, it was cool. But um, yeah, I, I go to movies. Uh, my job allows me to, you know, I have time, a lot of time to kill in between um, locations that I have to work at. So I go to see anything. But I'm, I'm huge into, you know, comic book stuff. I like, I like uh, any like uh, action or drama movies. Like I just, I just saw Once Upon a Time in Hollywood not so long ago. It's probably my favorite movie of the year right now, besides Endgame. Um, it was just there's a lot of I, I like. I'm not a movie critic or whatever. I just like watching movies and seeing, you know, the cinematography of it and the acting ability of it, the writing of it, the dialogue, it kind of all intrigues me. Um, I'm actually in two movies as an extra coming up in October, The Joker and uh, oh, The nice. Irishman. Nice. You know, I'm probably not going to get any screen time, but, you know, I was on set, uh, The Joker, for five days and The Irishman for three. And I just like that uh, that element and I like that, that, um, that business and uh, it's something that I'm intrigued in, you know. And who knows, maybe that could be an avenue that I succeed in. But, you know, you got to start small and I just, you know, just kind of get a little extra gigs every once in a while. How come you didn't call us? <laughs> <laughs> we would have went with you. <laughs> T- so, TJ. Yep. Uh, you know, it's, it's amazing how, um, you know, you've been able to bounce back. I mean, you're making your name... Uh, again, in so many different places. Wow, uh, you know, B, uh, BWF. I mean, you know, you you just been on a roll wherever you go. People are still talking about you. People were talking about when you lost the uh, BWF championship. Yeah. I mean, uh, BWF. I just recently lost their world title. Yeah. And I was almost at the two year mark. Um, you know. I'm pretty much in a big, there's a big feud going on in BWF right now between the BWF roster and then the BCW. Um, BCW's team is basically uh, made up of the, the uh, Sajsuj and Spy. I can never get that name right. They're very weird. But um, yeah, I just recently lost their title because of the feud that's going on there. I was jumped in Money in the Bank style, cashed in on, so I got my rematch in two weeks at BWF 100 and I should get my title back no problem because Eric Jaden's not in my league which is an obvious state of fact yeah um, but do you feel like um, if you take him lightly do you feel like that might be a disadvantage I mean it probably could be thank you I should probably not take him lightly I mean he's got uh-huh. he's got a bunch of goons but uh yeah I kind of got him back at BCW a few weeks back I cost him his title match with my own running mate Darius Carter and everyone and their mother told the crusade for change was back until I flipped Darius Carter off because you know the crusade for change was great but it's done I mean they, they, I'm not beating a dead horse anymore mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's it's it is what it is like we had our run but you know Ken Cohen's doing his thing Carter's doing his thing I'm doing my thing and we all could just you know stay our pads and, and rock and roll but you know I came back to WoW and killing it in WoW I came back to BCW I'm killing it in BCW I'm still the top guy in BWF even though without the championship um, SWF is just a phone call away I've been making phone calls to you know people um, I went down the, going back down to Florida in a few weeks to go for WXW down there so hang out with Sean Maluda and have a good time yeah, you know, it's funny because you mentioned WoW and Darius Carter. I mean, he he's, he's now the top dog there. I mean, uh, 
Are you looking forward to maybe meeting? He just won the title on Saturday. Yeah, are you looking forward? You have to go through him if you want to become the champion. And wow, right? I mean, are you looking forward to getting in the ring with him? Absolutely. And um, I kind of ensured him getting the championship on Saturday. Mm -hmm. So he owes me one. So, yeah, that, that, that's the deal we made. Yeah, I was just going to say that. I was just going to say he, he, he owes you one, but... If he's smart, he'll avoid you as much as he can. Oh, yeah, he's definitely, the guy is definitely smart. He, he hasn't told me what day, but, yeah, I got a time of shot coming to me at well, so we'll see. Definitely. So, match if you can't miss. Yeah, definitely, for sure. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, have, I have a question I was wondering. You know, you know, yeah. during, when you're going during, you know, through your injury, were there anyone, anyone that, you know, that you – talk to for advice or that was there for you that guided you through this whole thing that you know kind of was yeah, like a, a yeah. backbone for you yeah I mean at first when it first happened and it found out Andrew actually hit me up and told me his his, his, his situation yeah. and it gave me you know gave me a lot of hope and honestly like you, Andrew you were one of the first people to hit me up um and like I, talking to you got me like right, <laughs> excuse me I'll be able to get through this you know even if I don't wrestle anymore there's always something I can do and I can still be healthy after this but you know like it was a very long seven months and I was told that I would never I would never wrestle again the fact that it was only seven months still felt like it was like seven years like honestly it's not a cliche I felt like I was gone for seven years um but you know Astro Morales and Anthony Gangone and Evander James were like kind of my um my crew to get me, uh, Vander James to train with me in the ring all the time and get my ring cardio back. Astro and, and Gango were more like my, my, my brothers that would be there phone call away or make sure I'm not eating terribly or make sure I'm being healthy or getting to a doctor. But yeah, those three guys, Vander with the in-ring and Astro and Gango for the real life stuff. Yeah, not a bad crew to hang around with. All talented <laughs> guys for sure. And, you know, yeah. uh, you know, but we're you know more importantly, I mean, we're happy to see you back and healthy, and uh, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, when you were going through that, man, I know, uh, I know how difficult that could be. So we're just happy you're still here with us and, and doing your thing. Thank you, man. It really, really, it really does. You know, you guys are always still sharing my stuff, and, and you were reaching out, making sure I was alright. It definitely helped, man. Like even when I was out, I was trying to stay relevant, and you guys were a big part of uh, keeping my promos out there. So I appreciate that. Yeah, man, that's what we do, man. Anything for a good brother. Um, let me ask you this because you know you you uh, you've been thrown in Facebook jail, right? <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, I mean, I I. I... Um, I gotta say this, I gotta remember how to be politically correct. You know, sometimes you go against the norm on certain topics, yeah. and I think that it's good that people have different opinions on, on anything. Like, some people love the Marvel movies, some people love the DC movies. Some people, you know, love one politician, some people hate one politician. I think the life is, um, I think our society is best when there's healthy debate. And when you're on Facebook, you can no longer do healthy debates because it just takes one person to feel a certain way and report you and throw you in Facebook jail. And I've been in Facebook jail, and I think it's actually been good, but just can't promote anything which sucks. Oh man, yeah, yeah. It, it's funny because somehow you're always in the middle of uh, uh, where people either love you or just hate you, and uh, that's, yeah. you know, there's no there's no gray in between, but. <laughs> and, and, and you know what that's life like you know like if not everyone's gonna love you yeah. and not everyone's gonna hate you and you know it's just because I have a, a different opinion on the matter and you have a different opinion on the matter we can talk and we can debate and we can see each other where each other's coming from we don't have to scream and yell at one another and I feel like Facebook it always comes down to a screaming and yelling match no one wants to hear the other side or the other side it can never happen but mm -hmm. obviously you know there's, in life there's always gonna be debates there's always gonna be different sort of opinions on things and I just need to get back to an era where okay you know what he thinks that way or she thinks that way why don't we leave it at that you know doesn't mean that he's a bad person doesn't mean she's a bad person they just have a different opinion on that one map yeah, but yeah. you know you see, you the, world, see, the world ain't sunshine and rainbows anymore you see why why on Facebook is, is so difficult and you get so much debate is because there's a whole bunch of old people on Facebook that's why 
That's what that's what it is. <laughs> There's no old people on Instagram or Twitter. They're all on Facebook. That's why you get all these problems, man. Oh, tw- Twitter, Twitter, man. Like, uh, I, I, I'll make my tweet and then I don't read shit. Because, you know, people uh, Twitter is like a cesspool of just hatred and negative energy. Like, I don't, I, I'll, I'll, if anyone listening, you comment on Twitter, I, <laughs> I don't. Because it's funny. just, I, I can't. I can't. It just it ruins my day. I can't do it. <laughs> Twitter is crazy. Now, and and speaking of Twitter, all right, I got three things that you know I got a bone to pick with you on. All right, because uh, all right, let's do it. Because when I look at T.J. Marconi, I think T.J. Marconi, he's a real man. That's a man's man. You're my list of man's men. All right. So, <laughs> uh, I know it's coming. So the first thing I got a problem with. Is I saw you you were you were at a Backstreet Boys concert at the Barclays Center. That's my first 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 bone to pick with you. You gotta explain that, uh, right? What were you doing at the Backstreet Boys concert? Uh, so like, I, I, I'm engaged <laughs> to be married, uh-huh. and my fiance is a huge Backstreet Boys fan. Now I'm not saying that I did not like the Backstreet Boys at all in my lifetime. They make good music. Uh. Are they my favorite band? No. Are they my fiance's favorite band? Yeah, so yeah, I was at a Backstreet Boys concert. But now, strictly on talent, these dudes are almost 50 years old uh-huh. and still killing it on stage. They're moving like they're 20. I had to give up for the performance aspect of that show. Okay. They were killing it for 50-year-old men. If I'm 50 years old able to do the shit they're doing, moving around like that, yeah. please, uh, just give me an ounce of that energy when I'm 50. All right, I'll oh, yeah, no, my fiance is a very big okay. Backstreet Boys fan. I'm not saying I hate the Backstreet Boys. Uh, I was there. I was enjoying it. Was I bouncing up and down screaming? No. I, I, and I, I took in. It was, a, it was a spectacle, and it was a good spectacle. Got you. Okay, I'll, I'll give you a pass on that. You got to have a happy wife for sure. I'll give, I, I give you that. So, number two. Number two. This yeah. one. This one, I don't know if I for, forgive you for it. I saw you right. stone cold style drinking some white claws, man. <laughs> All right. All right. So I, I, I'm trying to figure out a way, you know, because um, if, if you look at the, the industry right now, and no offense to any of these people that are getting over and getting money, yeah. people are getting over the weirdest ways nowadays. Yeah. You know? <laughs> white claw is famous for some reason. Like, you know, like, drink white claw and try to fight Enzo. That went viral. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, white, white claw, it's kind of a thing. You see memes about it all day long. At the end of the BCW show, they had me coming out there like Stone Cold. Uh-huh. I didn't, uh, I was like, I'm, if I'm Stone Cold, and white claw is, it, it, is like the viral hit right now, after I beat people up, check me some white claws and I'll try these things. Mm-hmm. So I beat, I beat everybody up. I, I waved to the guy in the cooler because the guy in the cooler was in a white claw all night. Gave me the idea to stroke a genius. Um, actually, the, you guys know BX Strong, they're up a comic tag team. Mm-hmm. Basically, yeah. they bet me. They said, you're not going to do this. I said, watch me. <laughs> um, I waved on. I caught two white claws and I downed them. Now, let me tell you, they suck. Okay, all right. All right, got you. They, they suck. Yeah, I know. They taste just like, 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 like bad seltzer. But I downed two of these suckers in like a matter of 30 seconds. Uh, I got a bus. Oh, man. <laughs> I, 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 it gave me a bus. It's not like I was drunk. I'm like, well, okay, there's definitely alcohol in this shit. Yeah. Oh, man. And I, <laughs> and then I, so I, then, uh, okay, um, that famous, uh, uh, famous the gift guy, you know, the famous guy, you know, he's, he's been a friend of mine and, uh, for years before he became the gift guy. He's like, dude, take a picture with the white claws. Let me see if this gets over. I'm like, all right, whatever. I did the, the crushed up white claws. I took a picture of it. He's like, Stone Cold White Claw approves this post. So, <laughs> I mean, that, that, that was the white claw thing. So, now I guess that's my, my spiel there at BCW going forward. But I have to admit, they, they are awful tasting. Yes. They, yeah. they, I, don't know what, I don't know the appeal behind them at all. I was going to ask what your favorite flavor was, but you kind of just uh, <laughs> told us the awesome. I, I, so. <laughs> so, so, I think it was a lime and like a root. Like it was two different flavors that I downed at once. Uh-huh. So yeah, that 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 was bad. That, that oh. was not good. That was not good. Like if someone if someone told me I have to drink the cherry one next time, so they're gonna stack the cooler up with the cherry ones. Uh-huh. Uh, just spoiler alert: September 27th at BCW, I'm gonna be doing this again, and I'm probably still gonna hate the white claw. So 
Yeah. I mean, you can't mix two different flavors, right? You gotta get the same flavor. Yeah, no, I, I had two different flavors, and it right. was, was god awful. Okay, last point right here. This, this, yeah. this, this is not about being a man, but this is just a are you serious question right here. <laughs> There's no way that you're gonna tell me that you think Andrew Luck is leaving the NFL and all those millions of dollars to go to the XFL with his dad. There's no way you're telling me that. Now, now hear me out. <laughs> okay. hear me, now hear me out. Uh-huh. Have you guys ever seen a press conference from Andrew Luck? I have seen a press conference from Andrew Luck. All right. He's a strange dude. He is pretty weird. He's a strange dude. He, he's got like that half Hobbit, half Harry Potter thing going on with his face. Yeah. He's a strange dude. I don't know why he would retire from the NFL right before the season starts, only after uh, he's only 29. He's one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. Whatever, it's on him. But his dad runs the XFL. Yes. Uh, you know, it's it, uh, just like he, is, he calls his son, hey, you'll be the guy in the XFL. It won't be as strenuous. I mean, sillier shit has happened. I don't know. Hey. I, and that's a strange guy. That's a strange guy. I, I, I hear you, but XFL, I don't think they got... Not, it's not going to happen. They don't got enough money for them, man. They definitely no, don't. It's definitely not going to happen. And I mean, but, I, I love my parents too, but... <laughs> I would not. I would definitely not I would definitely not turn down millions of dollars to go work for my parents. <laughs> that's for sure. No, but I, I, I think the Colts paid him. Yeah, that's they gave him his money. I, I, I think they gave him the this year's salary. They, so he got twenty four million dollars to retire. He still got the twenty four. From what I heard, yeah, they gave they gave him the money on good faith that they hope that he'll change his mind in the future and come back. <sighs> I mean, that's a hell of a retirement package. Shit. Yeah, I'll take yeah. it. I'll you take know, half of it. TJ, I want to ask you because you know you're always asking people when is the perfect time to to start talking about a, a movie that just came out, um, like a spoiler yeah. and stuff like that. When do you think is the an appropriate time for people to start talking about a uh, about a movie's ending or a TV show ending? Um, with movies, I say after opening weekend. Um, mm. You know, maybe that, that that Monday, that Monday morning or that Sunday or that Sunday afternoon. You know, like I think that's fair game. Um, I usually go see movies opening night on Thursday late. So you know, I, I have my opinions and my thoughts, and I want to get them out there. But you know, I have to hold it back for after that opening weekend. I think TV shows. I think TV shows is a day. You, you get like you know, like I know people gotta work, but like you know, with technology the way it is now, you can stream it, you can DVR, you can watch. You, like, you got a day. Like Game of Thrones, you got a day. The Walking Dead, you got a day. But a uh, movie, give it the opening weekend. Yeah, that's a, that's, that's always so annoying how. I'm supposed to watch what I put on my social media because you didn't watch something. Sometimes they don't see everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, and, I, and, I, and I know for personally, so like um, Spider-Man Homecoming, I couldn't go because I was away. It was a weird release day. I didn't go on Facebook or anything like that until I watched the movie because I didn't want to get it spoiled. And that's like a conscious decision you have to make. Like, you know there's people out there that's just going to live to burn a movie. So, you know, you got to make small decisions. That is definitely true. I, I love doing the opposite. I, I tell spoilers that aren't true, so I'll tell you someone died that didn't really die just to get people upset. Well, I, I'm, I'm probably going to do that. I, I would do that for the Star Wars movie because um, I, I would definitely, like, I'll go see Star Wars. I'll definitely see Star Wars opening night, and I'd be like, oh, my God, Rain Star Vader. You know, like, I would definitely do something like that to get people pissed off. Yeah. But, yeah, I, 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 like, I like that, like, the, 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 the fake spoiler. Definitely. I always just tell people it ends with the credits. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> right, because you're never really wrong with that, and it just kind of. Um, yeah. Let me ask you this: uh, Did you watch the last season of Walking Dead? I stopped watching. Okay, uh, Walking Dead. The last thing I saw was um, so Rick got impaled, taken up by a helicopter. Yeah. Um, Jesus died. Okay, I think it was. Jesus died, and then the little girl was the main. The little girl was the main. Yeah, um, Judith. Uh, the main. The main baby face. Yeah. Uh, Ju- yeah, I think that was the last episode I saw. It was like the first episode where Judith was the main baby face, and I kind of just like that. Was, I know people tell me to get back into it. It got better, but like, I kind of lost my love for it. 
right after that. Like I stopped. Then I heard the the season got good when Rick died. So I I, I sped up. I watched the Negan saga. I watched the the Rick death, and then I watched the Jesus death and the the Judith taking over at the baby face. And I just, I, I wasn't into it anymore. Yeah, let me ask you this: What's better, Barbie or Lucille? <laughs> Barbie or Lucille? Yeah. Oh man. Uh, I mean. For me, it would be Barbie, but mainstream Lucille kind of like like took over the world. So yeah. I mean, I think we gotta go Lucille. Lucille, all right, oh, cool. Wow. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. You know, both are. I, I guess because I still love Mick Foley, I would have to go with Barbie. <laughs> yeah, but in- I, 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 you, I, you gotta look at it mainstream. Like uh, yeah. I, I, I use this analogy now when I'm training kids. I'm like, my, my little brothers watch wrestling. Mm-hmm. They know Goldberg and they know Brock Lesnar. They they like the flippy guy Ricochet, but they know Goldberg and Brock Lesnar. So you know we know Ricochet's a better wrestler. Yeah, but you gotta go mainstream sometimes. I feel like you think of Mick Foley. It's like the Mr. Sacco was more hardcore than Barbie. Yeah, like you like you don't think about Barbie, you think about Mr. Sacco. (laughs) Yeah, that's what you think. Kind of like became a freaking uh, phenomenon. Uh, Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's sure. It's true. Yeah, I actually. yeah, I guess I have to agree with you on that for sure. <laughs> yeah. Now, I have, a, I have another important question for you. Um, are you still doing Arnold Schwarzenegger impersonations? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> One day I will make this incredible human being. I will show him my, lo- my love for his work, his, uh, his philanthropy, his movie, uh, his movie films. And my my accent for him is is, is incredible. Oh, uh, you one day be like, holy shit, DJ, you are amazing. Look at you, you are you are you are a very nice person. You do my voice incredible. You have your philanthropy work. It's fantastic. You know, uh, yeah. So Arnold's my guy. Oh man, <laughs> did you did you see the video of the the kid who just ran up and drop kicked him in the back for like no reason? Yeah. He yeah, didn't man. he didn't like, even budge. Like, dude, like I, <laughs> I, I get it. Like you know, Arnold cheated on his wife with his maid. That's a dick move, but you know Arnold does so much philanthropy work. He does. He gives so much back to the community. He's just like a good dude. Like a like the adultery shit. All right, you got to work on your thing. You know, I'm not gonna go there, but like he he does like a lot of good for the world. And you just run up and drop kick that dude. Yeah, that's like, crazy. Kick some scumbag. <laughs> What's wrong with you, man? Yeah, that's crazy. And, but the thing is, he didn't even fall. <laughs> At least if you're gonna drop kick him. At least yeah, make sure he, he falls. Like, like, I, I, I made a joke with my boys like, "Was that the wind? What the hell hit me?" You know, like, <laughs> like he, didn't, he didn't even know it was a drop kick. <laughs> it's like, what happened? Who pushed me? Yeah. Why? Why? Why is there a breeze? We're indoors. You know, like that's what I think he was saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Wow, that's like that's good stuff. Uh, you know, we we touched about your love on films and stuff like that. Um, you do a lot of great vignettes with uh, hashtag dope. Um, yeah. How much uh, input do you have, or you just tell those guys, um, you guys do your thing and just put me in the put me in the scene? Um, I guess it's like, a, it's like another sports wall thing. Hashtag dope is um, Johnny Ball and uh, and William Coltrane, mm-hmm. but like I'm like the third wheel behind that creative wise. Um, when they came up with the concept, they basically said like, you know, we like what you're doing, and you have always have a good idea and vision for turmoil. So like, I'm the part of hashtag dope. If, if like, if anything, I'm like a producer or whatever. I think like executive producer would be the word for it. Yeah. Um, you know, like guys reach out to me from what you like, listen, um, give me your character idea, and they tell me what they're doing, and then I'll shoot it over to Will, and then me and Will will collaborate. We'll find a location, and boom, we'll get it done. But yeah, I, I my thing is. You know, the generic wrestling promo is always going to be good, you know, say, say uh, priors and eat vitamins and look at the camera selfie style. But the thing that hooks people is, like, these cinematic-looking videos and these movie-style uh, promos. Yeah. So that's what I, I sit down and think about these things. And I think about ideas for people, and that's just finding locations and meeting up with Will. Like, listen, I got this idea. Me and Will will chat it up, and, you know, we'll make it happen. Definitely. Now, I feel like I've, I don't know if I ever asked you this before, but, you know, besides the, the Arnold impersonation, do you have any other hidden talents, like, outside of the ring that nobody would know about? Uh, um, uh, I got a good Arnold impersonation. <laughs> oh, man. I'm trying to think. I, 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 okay, so... Um, I'm 
really good at math. I got like scary good at math. Um, I don't know. Uh, the SAT scared uh, changed a little bit, but like I don't. I got a 790 on the on the math portion of the SAT when I was in high school, oh, nice. which is crazy because it's like out of 800. So that's kind of a hidden talent. Like I'm good with like problem solving, I guess. But um, I mean. Hey, I, don't lose at Monop- I don't lose at Monopoly. I, I don't remember. I, I, got, I can't like say like I never lost. I don't remember ever losing at the game Monopoly. And I'm, this is like a really, it's like a shoot. Like I really don't remember losing at Monopoly my entire life. I was always, well, I always won, and everyone that was yelling at me, they always figure out how to win. So I mean, maybe that's a hidden talent too. <laughs> oh man, we should we should play together. I never lost either because I I would always be the I'm banker winning. and steal money. <laughs> I, I, never, I never do the bank. I, I literally never do the bank. I, know, I don't like being the bank. You always get accused of cheating, and I always, I, got, I always like not it. Like I'm like not it, not the bank. But uh, like, so if you want, like I always go for the, the they change the colors. I don't know if it's just called the purple and the light blue. That's that's my strategy. Yeah, see, have you ever played Monopoly with a Jewish guy? No. <laughs> All right, so you got a challenge. <laughs> All right. All right. Oh, man. You know, we're going to nickel and dime you, and then, uh, you know. This is this is going to be real life Monopoly. You're going to play with a Jewish I'm guy. I'm, I'm going to be the banker. The banks cheat you all the time. So I'm going to cheat you. We're going to see if you can survive. The bank, the bank always cheats. Always <laughs> yeah. cheats. You, you see know, that? For, first it's Boardwalk, and then it's Hollywood. You know, we control the banks, too, so don't worry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, when you play with a Jewish guy, it's it's real hardcore. So, <laughs> yeah, you know we know what we're doing with the when it comes. You know, I always tell uh, Derek. I say, you know, um, my I always tell girls once you go Jewish, you go financially stable. So this is correct. So, this, is, this is what I hear. This is what I hear. Yeah, and then I always tell him once you go black, you go wheelchair. <laughs> wheelchair. If not. <laughs> 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 oh man, Jesus Christ! Oh, we, we just slid off the yeah, rails right just, now. Yeah, this went off the. <laughs> so <laughs> let's let's get back on track. So TJ, when you let, tell us about you know your your first match, like how was that for you? How nerve wracking was that to you know get back in there? Your first match, getting back in the ring. I mean, it was fifty seconds, so it wasn't that bad. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it was it, it was uh, it was nerve wracking. Um, I, I to this day like um I'm still I'm very I don't think insecure is the word it's um I'm hard on myself like I, I feel like I've lost a step I feel like I'm not myself because I know I'm not myself I'm definitely not 100 percent but um my, my first match back it was you know there was no butterflies it was just all right let's make it happen and it was, it was 50 seconds and it was cool um this past week I kind of got the best compliment I had since coming back. It was at Warriors of Wrestling, and uh, Dream, uh, Tommy Dreamer was the match uh, after me yeah. on the card. And he actually watched my whole stuff. He goes, listen, uh, I wrestled you before, and I know you at your best, and uh, I watched you tonight, and uh, you don't look as bad as you think you look. So, I mean, that, that kind of was like a good thing to get my, my confidence back up. Was like, he's like, listen, like, sure, you put on weight, and maybe... You know, your your breathing's a little off, but like to me, like I wrestled you when you were at your best, and you know you're not as bad as you think you are right now. So I mean, that kind of helped a lot. Gotcha. What high praise, especially from Tommy Dreamer, a guy who just yeah. keeps on doing it all. You know, I mean, when you yep. think he's done, he's just doing something else. <laughs> yep. Uh, you know, it's it's crazy um, to see you come back and and you know, and just doing this at a high level again. Um, now that you're back, I mean, the world's your oyster. Who are you looking forward to facing across that ring? You have a, a bucket list. Um, yeah, uh, I got guys that I definitely want to wrestle before I'm done, and uh, I don't. And people like, what do you mean before I'm done? Um, I don't want to keep doing this at a full time um, schedule or a full time rate into my forties mm-hmm. if I'm not anywhere of making money. So you know. Uh, I'm giving myself maybe like a couple more. I got just turned 30, so uh, in 10 more years, I'm not going to be doing this unless I'm on TV. But um, guys like Azrael, uh, Homicide, Dan Moss, uh, Steve Mack, Loki, uh, definitely I, I haven't had a match with my best friend, Sean Maluda, and it's it's criminal that you know we grew up together when we still haven't wrestled each other one-on-one. But I, I, the guys I want to wrestle, the guys that I watch, are the guys that I respect. Um, that's kind of my bucket list right now. Those are the few off the top of my head. 
to do one more game going. If Arcadia ever comes back, he's for sure on the top of my bucket list. He's the second best wrestler I've been in the ring with ever. He's criminally underrated, and uh, just shame that he's not anywhere. But yeah, that's that's kind of my uh, bucket list. Is like the that JAP crew of guys. If, um, you know, everyone's afraid of low key, but I'm not afraid of low key. Everyone's afraid of high. I owe homicide one. Um, I owe Dan Moff one. I owe Steve Mack one. I definitely owe Lazarus one. So those kind of my guys. Jeez, man, aren't aren't you aren't you supposed to be like taking it easy when you come back? <laughs> I, 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 gotta, I gotta I gotta test myself, man. I gotta test myself. You said Dan Moff, no, low key. I, I, if, I'm, if, I, if I'm the guy that you know beats the the Godfather of, of New York City professional wrestling and then uh, and, and homicide, or I take Dan Moss to the limit and I give him the Birmingham, Birmingham or I let him sneak back in the face, or I do a little spin kick to actually no, I don't do spin kicks, I just boot low-key in the face, you know, I, I think I give me some buzz, no? Yeah, definitely, yeah. that's for sure. It, you know, uh, that's their whole squad, you're taking out the whole squad, <laughs> man. Ah, uh, some morning seats were up on. Yeah, you see that? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> what, a, what an elite squad that is, for sure. I mean, uh, you know, you gotta be honest, you know, you, how excited are you still when you hear those trumpets come off from Homicide? I mean, you know, I, I know you squared off against him, but you gotta be like a kid inside a little bit, right? Yeah, man. It, it definitely, it definitely is it, surreal. I mean, these are the guys who got me into indie wrestling. So being on shows with them and having like uh, conversations with them, and you know, Homicide actually hit me up. He's like, "Hey, you feeling? When you back, you know, you still got shit to do. You owe me one." So you know, it's kind of surreal. They're like a guy that I watched, and, and you know, Dan Moss too hits me up. He was like, "He's one big guy." You get back together, you owe me one, you know, so it, it, it's kind of surreal. Definitely surreal. Yeah, you're going to have to keep your eye on TJ Marconi to see him go through yeah. the entire uh, hit squad yeah. and the DHS family. <laughs> so, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, it's going to, yeah, I mean, I'm rooting for you, man. I mean, uh, Thank I, you. I, I'm just glad that you're back doing your thing and, uh, yeah, man, it's, it's incredible to see you out there and, and doing what you love to do. So, yeah, yeah man. Thank you. Yeah, and um, we just want to, we, we definitely, you know, we want to thank you for, you know, coming on the show. Like always, you know, you're, you're, you're part of our family for sure. We definitely appreciate you taking out the time, answering our questions all the time, always making it fun for sure. Yeah, yeah man, you know I'm always here. I always have fun on the one-on-one, on the, on the one, so. Yeah. So, TJ, um, you know, you always tag us and we always share things for you whenever you need. But uh, can you just tell people where they can find the public enemy number one in case they want to follow and, and maybe yell at you on social media? So, yeah, so come, come follow me on Facebook uh, and, and then and yell at me and get me back in jail at TJ Marconi. <laughs> it's TJ Marconi on Instagram and Twitter. On Twitter, I will not read your comments. So, you know, uh, probably DM on 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 uh on Twitter if you want to actually have a conversation with me I'll speak to you there comments it just goes crazy I don't read them but you know right now but yeah Facebook Instagram and Twitter uh, TJ Marconi uh, you can see like my promos and my vignettes at youtube.com slash TJ Marconi where I collaborate with hashtag dope so and then um, you know I'm every first Saturday of the month I'll be at BWF in the Bronx the BWF is you know completely a different uh, product now. It's it's uh, it's updated to the 21st century. It's got better vignettes, it's got better promos, it's got better athletes. And uh, I'm taking an interest in BWF every first Saturday of the month. So I'll be there every first Saturday of the month. Nice, that's dope. See, and, and since you don't reply on Twitter, I think I'm going to start... I'm gonna start a whole sh- whole stick where I'm just like calling you out, and I'm like, "Yeah, he's ducking me." You see, he doesn't even reply to me. <laughs> I'm ducking you back, and I don't read it. Well, Sean Malou's also ducking you too, right? Yeah. Uh, Malou's been ducking me for 22 years. Oh man! Oh man! <laughs> but you know, we definitely once again, TJ. You know, we definitely appreciate it, man. We we we, we thank you for yeah, coming thank on you again. Thank you so much. Any, anytime, man. I can't wait for the next time. So. Yeah. Well, 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 a lot more to talk about. Yeah. Definitely. And you can follow Wrestling IQ 101 on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Wrestling IQ 101. You can listen right here on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe or search Wrestling IQ 101 on iTunes and hit the subscribe button or on the B Plus Player Network. 
And uh, for everyone here, we will see you next week. We are out.